It's been a while. I think well over a year that we've seen each other. That's true. It's been yeah. over a year since I've seen anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone bigger than this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, goodness. So um, we have several different disciplines in the room. Yeah, um, it's a it's sort of a caps capstone class, as I kind of explained to you. Uh, there's students that are graphic design illustrators and then fine artists. So, and some of the illustrators and graphic designers are kind of like you know meeting each other. You know, they're they they can draw, so they consider themselves illustrators and they can design so they consider themselves designers so i love that. i think they'll end up out in the field doing whatever comes their way well you know that's why i'm really excited to be here because um i'm a multimedia artist and i participate pretty actively in in those areas you just mentioned uh kathy and i know each other through the fine arts and uh you know uh as often happens if somebody knows you in one art form uh, that's sort of your identity and until you find out hey what what's that saxophone doing in your in your room i aren't you a designer and you know you know then then this whole other dimension kind mm -hmm. of opens up so um you know uh, as a as an artist i'd like to share with everybody in here at least at some point some of the work that may be in the show next spring hopefully hopefully that's next spring <laughs> i know I, I have both kathy and jason in earshot um, which would be great. <laughs> uh, so I want to share some of that work with you. But, you know, the thing I'm most excited to do is to have a chance to actually talk to people um, from different disciplines and in, in sort of from this point of view. Um, as an artist, I'm most interested in freedom wherever I could find it. And, and it's a weird juggling act what that means because we all, you know, we come in wanting to pay our bills. So, you know, when you were a kid and you first fell in love with art, whatever art form that was. Uh, you weren't thinking about bills at all. And then you got older, you know, and it really probably in, in your teens, you started to think about it. And then soon after this, this weird relationship. So the fine artists in the room, I'm, I'm sure they have that on their mind, uh, where are they going to show and, um, you know, what, what galleries can they engage? Uh, and, and the designers too, you know, are you going to go full time? Are you going to be freelance? Do you, do you have agents? Um, uh, you know, illustrators as well, uh, you know, that have that's changed, you know, in New York City, uh, you know, you used to have to walk around all over the place and take your portfolio with you, have something to drop off there, you know, physically, shake some hands. Um, so it's a weird juggling act because you're still in it for your soul. You know, whether it's, I think some of us are very comfortable with that word, what I'm saying, uh, other people might choose other words, but you're in it for your soul. You know, you, you know, we could have all you know, found something guaranteed employment. I, I never met a good accountant who didn't do well, you know, but I, most of you guys re really couldn't do that, even if you're a math wizard, because uh, you had a different set of needs. So, you know, where I'm coming from today, what I want to share with you is, you know, I wonder if any of you know this quote, because it's been on my mind all week, and I, I would love to know who actually said it. It was something like this. It, it, the, the artist was saying to someone, you know, I, I want to talk to you about how art makes a life not how it makes a living. Some famous mm -hmm. artist said that to somebody else. And, and you know, in a weird way, I'm um, coming from that place with a whole layer of realism on top, you know, because of course we want to make livings. So, um, you know, some of the artwork I want to show you today, uh, hopefully, um, you know, since we'll be talking and I'm, I'm kind of going you know, to follow um, Kathy's lead if, if she wants to help me out. Great. <laughs> Is, uh, you know, I want to share with you this, um, my journey a little bit, because what it includes is arts that I um, love that pay <laughs> and other arts that I love that don't. And I've made this sort of career of um, having, you know, the one that pays pay for the one that doesn't. Uh, and then sometimes I'm surprised and the one that doesn't starts to be, uh, people are more interested. Uh, I think I'm in a moment like that. In fact, this visit here is part of it. My Instagram profile. Can I give you a peek? Let's see if this works. And tell me if um, the technology is not behaving. Can I screen share? I guess I can. Yep. Yep. You're allowed to. All right. I'm going to screen share, and I want to, uh, you know, give you a peek at something. This, uh, this is my Instagram account, and I'd like to give you a look at this work um, in a better way. 
than Instagram, but I, I have it here and I wanted to mention, you know, this account kind of rattled my belief system in uh, what, what was paying the bills and what wasn't. You know, um, graphic design, web design, uh, multimedia design um, has been a big part of my bill paying life and teaching those things um, at, at a number of different colleges. Um, this was my secret for a while, my, my private voodoo enterprise, uh, my, my favorite way to soul dive. And soul diving is my number one pastime. And these represented uh, this, this secret. In fact, uh, a common uh, friend of myself and, and, uh, and Professor Farrell um, and I were walking around in Brooklyn and we came across a book that this text, let me just give you a peek at this, see if we can get a little closer. This text comes from this book that I found on the street walking around out here. We, we had a common, um, very dear friend, the two of us. And he and I, his name was Perry, we found these books on the street. And um, I wound up working right on the pages of the book. And down here, this is an actual page of the book. Uh, more recently, the book found its way into my computer. So um, the, the hundred year old paper of this really old, gorgeous mystic book, it's like a set of books that I dragged home and started drawing on, it has become a massive part of my life. So now it's integrated into the computer as well as in, this is a mixture of uh, computer and actual paint and um, folding and wrinkling and printing <laughs> and soaking and uh, any kind of manipulation. So there's a lot of stuff here that looks a little bit more like painting. Um, I don't know if you guys can make it out. I'm gonna give you a closer look at some other stuff. So I'm, I think I'm gonna switch out of here. These are maps. Now I know it's a small group here, so I could tell you, because um, a lot of people have seen these but this is a map of my neighborhood. And almost everybody thinks that these is um, circuit boards because I do a lot of stuff that implies that. So it's circuit-like, but it's actually a map. My house is on this map. I could even point to it. But I, I never really admitted that to anybody but my family. I don't want Instagram to know, so shh. <laughs> um, let me back out of here though, because I want to show you something. I, I think I'd be more comfortable um, showing you differently. Give me just a moment. There we go. So let's see. There's my house, this little one. I'm sitting right here, right now, as you look. But I just wanted to say that this was a private, a private affair. And really every piece has to take me to a place that I don't expect. Um, that's what it's there for. It's, it's gotta be about risk taking. Um, these are small, the ones in front of you, some are quite a bit larger, there's the size of a book. You know, and uh, but somehow more people have looked at these than anything I've ever done. And I, I think the last couple of years, maybe a quarter million, half a million people have actually seen them, which uh, shocks me, those numbers really, even now. Um, and I've been shy about showing them. Uh, and Kath Kathleen didn't give me a choice. She just looked right at me. She's like, I'm gonna show these. <laughs> didn't even have a chance to, to go hide under the table. So, um, let me leave this for a minute. You know, I have this idea because, uh, again, I'm very excited by the, the mixed crowd. I'm sure the painters in here have dabbled in illustration and illustrators have done painting and the designers, maybe both. But, you know, really, we all know that things are not that cut and dry. You know, uh, you know, the violinist who gets the first row violin in the orchestra could probably play a bunch of instruments. You know, may, may even be able to conduct for that matter. So I want to share something with you. How do I float this boat? Maybe I could start there with, with how the boat got, how the boat floats. I want to come over here to this. This has uh, become a calling card for the one way that I really like paying for art, which is helping um, other people make art. Um, and uh, it just turns out that I have a good rapport in, in the classroom. So I get, I get a lot of work. Um, this here says that I'm uh, for hire in, I, maybe I'm not. <laughs> Everyone's always looking for a better gig. <laughs> I like the ones that I teach at, but let me give you a peek inside. If you go to creating on this website, I want to point out that it focuses on, and I'm being blunt to you guys, being strangely frank, you know, this focuses on the stuff that cashes in the most that I love. I have to love it, right? But in this particular case, 
I don't really want to teach the kind of stuff that I'll be showing uh, with you guys at um, in the future and the stuff that's on Instagram right now. Not just now, not just yet. Let me give you a taste of stuff I do teach. I'm lowering the volume down while that's running there. I, I want you to picture this. This is really big, four really large monitors. It was an installation. And the fun of it was, wow, how can I use the monitors? Uh, people showing there were just ignoring that there were monitors there. Everybody had a black vertical and a black horizontal. And I, I just really love the challenge of using it. So sometimes it's separate, sometimes it's not. I, I have to give credit. There's a lot of artists involved in showing off my own students my animation students and multimedia students are on this one. And the music uh, is by uh, a very talented composer named Ross Williams. Let me uh, pause this because uh, one of the majors that hasn't been mentioned in here is motion. So I wanna move on to something else. Um, these are illustrations mostly and some graphic design stuff, some paintings in there. It was a little nervy to mix, mix it up. Um, I wanna show you a little bit. This is a, a series that I still play with now and then. I, I'm considering making it into a book. I could show you what it would look like um, called Giraffarus. And it's really mostly based on things I've seen humans do that struck me as quirky. And, and in some cases only struck me as quirky. So I passed these two guys down Wall Street, Manhattan. And uh, they look so intimate lighting the cigarettes for each other. These two kind of tough guys who, you know, look like, you know, they're great investors you know, and uh, wear Rolexes and they were getting all close. And I, I like the idea of making them rhinos. So this whole world is rhinos and giraffes doing things usually that I've seen in this case, obviously I didn't see this. Um, they come, they think they discover a planet and they discover each other. Um, I wanna mention to you um, music. Um, I make music and music's a big part of my, my life and process. Um, I, I haven't recorded lately, but I do record. And I have a close alliance with this band, the Electric Rosenbergs. And I got to do a lot of artwork for them. Um, they're, they're a Frankenstein-like company. So I don't know if you can make out the bolts on this bunch of fellas. Really, these it's a all guy uh, group of radical musicians. This is more of their stuff. This is one of my favorites. It's it's so it's so evil. And um, you know, I, I like to be Mr. Nice Guy but it's, it's fun to kind of play with ideas like this. I, I, hope, I hope it comes across. Don't take a bath with your old radio in there. So I'm gonna skip through these, right? There's a bunch of uh, more electric Rosenberg stuff. This is a reference to LA, to the couple who were electrocuted for treason that, that they're named after. Uh, Ethel and Julius, a lot of stuff for them. This is me, I, I'm secretly truth serum. If I was going to be here for longer today, I'd, 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 I'd force you all to listen to it. I, I even have a song about art school. <laughs> Cued up from the School of Visual Arts. Websites, these are much more, about, much more fun. These are posters that I've made. Again, this is real commercial stuff right here. So I have to say, you know, I think some people are, uh, you know, surprised. What, how, how would somebody do this who makes that weird stuff that's on Instagram? And uh, you know, it's funny. I don't know if you guys feel this way. Sometimes young artists are like, I think I want to wait tables if, uh, until I get my own art off the ground. You know, I don't want anything taking my creative energy. So I'm going to do something that doesn't. It doesn't really work that way, at least not in my experience. You know, in my experience, the more creative you are, it's, uh, it spreads. It's like, the, it's like a fire. You know, you get involved in graphic design. Look, I went in kicking and screaming. I went in for money. And then I wound up getting excited about it. It just made me better at everything else. I think the artwork I do today wouldn't have happened if, if the guy who made this didn't slam into the guy who uh, makes posters for people selling their, their, their products now and then. So I just want to mention about this one. Uh, a lot of uh, work from this period was made on uh, wood found. And I was very interested in the gouges in the wood. Uh, this was sliced up and then rearranged so the gouges spill in different ways. 
and uh, my paint, the way I see it, kind of merges in and out of the actual wood. I hope there's more of these here. This is one of my favorites called Artery Large. I hope you could see the real wood knots and wood grain. And you know, basically I have to say, put it this way. <laughs> I think one of the things I believe in most uh, in art and life is this idea of collaborating with nature, uh, which includes fate and, and the physics of reality. So your own imagination, your own personality is always collaborating with uh, that year, that day, that object, that tool. So I like the idea that I always saw space in flat things, and maybe some of you do. And you know, logically, you know there's infinite space, even in a piece of paper. Uh, and if you were small enough, it, it would be overwhelmingly large. Uh, but when you're, you're tuned into that, you could kind of sense that space. So I, I made it this sort of spiritual slash creative enterprise, trying to merge into that space. My, my space and the wood space and, and the imaginary space in the viewer. Another from that period. Wood. These are big, heavy things. So, you know, sometimes you're doing illustrations for yourself or drawings for yourself and, and they just catch someone's interest. This, this was pretty, really peculiar. I was sitting in a Chinese restaurant. Um, getting strange, talking with a friend, philosophy, favorite thing to do. And a guy at a nearby table said, uh, if you, uh, I, I'm, I'm over listening to your conversation. Can I join you? He literally said, I just wrote a book about what you guys are talking about. And uh, it's called uh, The Still Good Hand of God. That wasn't my favorite part of the title, but the subtitle is The Magic and Mystery of the Creative Unconscious. And at the time I was doing this, these illustrations of what I called angels. And I was making the argument that they integrate into the world. And this, they're starting to become architecture here, the angels. And uh, this guy at the next table is like, oh, he was a uh, psychiatrist, in fact. And he knew a lot of people who, who, who believed they'd been kidnapped by UFOs. And he had a lot to say about what that means culturally and spiritually. And, and I got published in his book, which was really fun just because I was at the right restaurant. I would like to see, um, Kathy, should I continue showing work and to shoot in the breeze or, or um, what do you suggest? I was muted. Um, it's up to you if you don't mind the students, if they have a question for you to unmute, They're, they've been told to mute. Oh um, no! I, I would love uh, questions. You told them mute while you're while you're talking, but if if you wanted them to, if they had a question or something, absolutely. You know, let me. I would love to look at everybody. I'm having a small tech problem. I guess while I'm screen sharing, I can't do that. I'm, can, I'm just going to back out of screen sharing for a moment. Then, a second here. Why is this misbehaving when I live in Zoom? There we go. No, I'm better now. Ah, there we are. It's just the end of a long day. Does anybody have any questions for me? Please be courageous. Turn on your mic. Ask me something. I love questions. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes, Sorry. Cameron. Um, hello. First of all, I am really enjoying your presentation. Honestly, Kathy, I think this is one of my favorites that um, you've had us sit in on so far. I am vibing hard with everything you're saying right now. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you um, so much. But I am curious, um, I ask this question a lot to pretty much any artist I meet, always because I'm so curious about it. So when you are confronted essentially with the blank page at the beginning of the project, how do you go about starting? How do you get over any of that fear, any of that doubt, fear of the blank page, if you will? What essentially drives you away from the fear of failure and allows you to put your entire heart and soul and energy into making a piece? That, you know, it's an excellent question. And, you know, I, I feel like people who, who make art, uh, say young and struggle, and maybe some days I should be watching, should be making art, but I'm, I'm watching TV. And then later on, you, you get more disciplined, your discipline increases. You know, Matisse said inspiration comes while working. 
And it, when I was young, I, I started to realize how true that was. So you get in there and you start making a mess. You know, um, in the past, I used to teach a, a lot of experimental film classes. And I would sometimes assign, I need a very bad movie. You know, um, you, the assignment is to do a three minute movie that we're all gonna just trash. And it was interesting to watch. They couldn't do it with the pressure of me asking for something bad. <laughs> they just couldn't do it. And it, so the psychological loop of um, the fear of failure, as you mentioned it, you know, the, here's, the, here's the exchange. The adventure of not knowing at all what's going to happen is so thrilling that, you know, you just wind up not minding failing after a while. And so you just don't. You know, Miles Davis uh, once said uh, that what his feeling about music is you can't play a wrong note if you follow it with the right note. And I so believe that. So, uh, you know, whatever goes down, you know, I wanna say something to Cameron and to everybody here. If I was showing you some of my fine art and uh, which is a dominant theme for me, uh, but I learned something from it that you could even use in any of the commercial arts that I also participate in. In my fine art, I don't fix anything. You know, I was talking to my daughter about it yesterday who's been painting lately. And I was saying, that's a kind of a funny thing. And I realized I do the same as a musician. I don't fix anything. I go Miles Davis about it and accept it. And the next step uses it. So it's like, you're gonna have a party and it rains. Do you scrap the party or do you make a party out of the rain? So if you have that attitude when you're making art, there's much less to be afraid of. You might still have to do with energy, you know, energy level, you know, cause life's so tiring, you know, I'm just so tired. How do I make art? You know, that, but the fear, I think, will just go away because it's just that sheer hunger. You know, can I, I want to put it yet another way. I do believe everyone in this room on some level believes in magic. They might not use the word. They might rebel against me using the word. But on some level, they believe more. There's more than we could logically rationalize about. There's more that we could list. And that we, we know it when we're swooning in front of a sunrise or a newborn baby, or uh, you fall in love or whatever, you, you know that it's beyond logic. But the artist has to have it. The artist just has to have that. They don't want to be in that universe where it's only about uh, gravity and paying bills and calories and life insurance and, and you know who got elected, but you know of that place where the heart swoons because it's in the middle of the mystery. So if you fall in love with the mystery, there's less fear. You just make stuff. You just keep making stuff. You know, I, I make stuff constantly, even out of my own reach. I, I wrote a book. I'm going to show you. This is my book. Yeah, it looks published. It isn't. This is because I'm a designer. I can make it look like it's published. <laughs> I wrote it. I'm still looking for an agent it's called The Devil's Barbecue. I never wrote a book. I hardly took any English classes. I'm just an audacious type of dude who, who likes getting in trouble. And I know some people are going to trash my book. Um, I, I had test readers. Um, one guy cried, left me a message on the phone. I figured, okay, I win. I don't have to publish. <laughs> I made someone cry with my book. That's great. Um, I would, let me give you a peek at something else that uh, just to make my point. Um, so I made this movie called Outgoing Message. Yeah, let me give you a peek at this for a second. Doesn't look good that large though. I just want to mention, so, you know, I got involved with sort of um, consulting on tiny art movies um, and uh, helping people learn to edit. It's something I'm, I just love to do. It's like painting with film. Um, and I had the urge to write a script and, and make a movie and see what the whole process was like. And talk about fear of failure, you know, like 
so many people knew what I was doing. I just couldn't possibly hide it. And then what I did was I chose it. I used it as a discipline because um, I am shy. You know, like my work hasn't been in many galleries. I've been shy in some ways and not in others. So with the movie, I was like, let everybody know. Let all my students know. And that's, that's a lot of people. And uh, uh, if I fail, then they'll all know it's okay to fail. You know, and if I succeed, then uh, yay. And if I land in the middle where half the audience loves it. So it got screened. A couple hundred people saw it. And uh, I think some people hated it. Some people loved it. The audience was incredibly warm. And, um, but my favorite thing was the next day, somebody told me that they'd been at a bar with a bunch of people who saw it and they spent most of the night arguing about the movie. You know, it was like, were they arguing just, does it suck or is it gold? <laughs> maybe, maybe that was the argument. <laughs> but it was more like, you know, what happened? And, and, you know, did this, the guy finds, I won't ruin it in case anybody wants to see it on YouTube. This is a short version I got in front of you. Um, if anyone wants to watch it, it's called Outgoing Message. You'll probably get all stuff about phones, so include my name. If you want the little one, it's Redux. The big one, I'd just write full, uh, search it with full outgoing message. But uh, it's, you know, things mystically go out of control when a guy gets a phone he never ordered. And um, there are many outgoing messages. So in any case, it was another exercise in just getting used to getting it out there. I've done the same with um, a bunch of music. Um, um, I still have this record that I want to release. I just want to kind of reproduce the music, um, the book, the movie, you know. So it's like where you're accepted and where you're not. So uh, I'm accepted in some safe places. And maybe that, maybe that empowered me to do the rest. Cameron, I'm going on forever about one question. Does anybody else have a question? It's just a good question, wasn't it? It can ask me a bad question. Just try. See, I don't. I don't really know if this is a bad question, but <laughs> I'm. I'm just so curious because. Uh, well, I'll just ask it. Uh, can you tell us about your like family background, sort of thing? And I only ask this because my mom and her entire side of the family's maiden name is Epstein. <laughs> well, I could share that with you. I'm. Um... Uh, I have a, a North Eastern European background. If, if anyone knows where Lithuania is, it's not a country people talk about a lot. Uh, my grandparents on both sides came from a, a, a ghetto area in um, the uh, early 1900s, no, really 1800s. The uh, place was invaded by uh, Russia. It was Lithuania has a history like that of constantly being taken over. Um, and it was the Russians were very unkind to people with my ethnic background. And uh, it was so bad that my family ran. And it was lucky that both sides ran because the, the Nazis took over after the Russians and they were even worse. Uh, last year, I went to uh, trace my heritage, my family. We're, we're wildly mixed as a family, I have to say. Um, so uh, my daughter especially wants to follow all her heritage. Uh, big, big connections are Cuba and Lithuania. We were having a hard time getting to Cuba. So we went to my side, which is Lithuania. And we got, uh, you know, so I was lucky. I wouldn't have been born. I went back to visit. There wasn't a single record of anyone with my background. They just literally wiped it all out. It's a beautiful place now and the people are kind. Uh, but at that time, so anyway, um, about that, I just want to say, you know, about my own ethnic background, is that a good word anymore? Do we allow that word, ethnic? I guess if I'm talking about myself, I could use it. But anyway, my own background, this, this little people, you know, who've just been in this small area. Ashkenazi is a certain kind of Jewish person that's from this small area. Uh, I come here and I'm very, you know, we're here. I'm very excited by diversity. I went to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. And, and frankly, anybody who wasn't from my background, I wanted to learn from. And in the end, uh, I learned from any artists whose work I liked and or uh, they had a background that I was less familiar with. Um, now, um, my wife's sitting right near me. I hope she doesn't mind me saying it. She's from Cuba. She's got Spanish and I think um, native uh, Caribbean blood, uh, African blood and Chinese blood. And uh, now I added all this European blood. We've literally covered every race, I believe. 
I sometimes joke that I want her to marry an Inuit, my daughter. This way we can literally say we have covered all the continents. So um, the reason I bring that up, even, even though I, sh I share that family name, by the way, we, I pronounce it Epstein, but it's still the same history. Yeah. Um, is it's more diversity. You know, it's funny. I started talking about diversity of art making and now I'm trying to, I guess, merge it with the idea of cultural diversity because here we are in this country and, you know, you, we have a lot to be angry about in this country, but one thing we definitely can be proud about is what all the cultures that are here have done to contribute to the world. You know, the collision, whether you were chased here, like my family, or whether you were kidnapped, <laughs> you know, your great grandparents or whatever were kidnapped or, or, or you ran here or running from a famine or, or whatever it was. Once we got here, uh, artistically, we mixed everything. We had, we had rhythms from Asia and Africa, you know, um, largely from Africa and, and, and more recently from uh, India, let's say. And we had melodies and, and complexities coming from uh, Europe, especially that little part of Europe that uh, is so influential. Um, and, you know, here we are in a group now of all different kinds of artists. Yeah, so anyway, that is my background. My background's pretty limited, you know, having uh, both sides come from a, a ghetto. <laughs> it was just one kind of person in that area, you know? <laughs> so that's, I'm a product of that, yeah, but a diversity via marriage at this stage. I don't know how much the Jewish side has to do with my making art because Jews historically did not make a lot of art. They were really afraid of making images uh, for religious reasons, fears of, of, of replacing God with an image of God. If I dared, I'd get religious on you right now. And the closest thing I could say about religion would be this. To me, you're God. And everyone in this room is God. And I love God. And so I really have to be kind and engage everything around me. And this is how I feel about fate too. Uh, this is a very large body of a very large creature that I'm very glad to be part of. And that is, that's my religion. And all my art has to do with that, actually. That belief. Anybody else? Your questions are good. Yeah, um, uh, it's Sal. Um, I did have, a, hi. Uh, I've been following you on Instagram and uh, I, I love your artwork. And Thank you. Uh, I, I, I have more of appreciation for it now just from hearing from you uh, because we kind of share the same philosophy. I, I like the idea that you said that, uh, you know, there, there shouldn't be any barriers between different art types. And I've always felt that way because I started off in comics and then I love fine arts, but I love filmmaking. I love making music. So uh, I, I, do kind of like teaching on YouTube and uh, any advice you would give to kind of reach a broader audience? Cause my audience tends to lean more towards teenagers and preteens, but yeah, I want I do want to reach, you know, the young adults or even uh, older adults. Cause I feel like older adults, they think very closed minded. Like they're like, Oh, I don't want to learn from a comic book guy. But the kids, they just love it. <laughs> so any not, advice on, on that? Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, because, um, so uh, because of COVID, I found myself having this YouTube life. And, um, you know, which, which I didn't ha expect to have. Um, so, um, you know, I teach at um, FIT in, in um, Manhattan and at a uh, uh, community college called Borough Manhattan Community College, um, CUNY. So I'm at CUNY and SUNY at the same time. I'm a CUNY SUNY guy. But uh, since COVID started, I had this urge to put all my classes online. Now, at first, I did something kind of radical based on everything I've said today. This won't surprise you. I just didn't want to password protect anything. I kind of figured if anyone could find my classes, they could just take them. And anyone who was clever was able to find everything, handouts, assets, videos. And then I noticed one of them had like a thousand hits. And on one hand, I got very excited. It's like, whoa, did not expect that one bit. <laughs> and on the other hand, I'm like, I'm gonna get killed. These schools are gonna come down on me. I, I can't be doing this. 
the Robin Hood of, of art education, you know. Um, but I did get a taste of it, right? So now, like, now I'm thinking, what am I gonna do with this? You know, now I know how to do it. I, I made a few that were very fancy, you know, text slides in, you know, little sounds, you know, the mouse lights up if I use it, all that jazz. Uh, but I, I wanna say something to you in, um, cause I really can't answer the question of how to create a larger audience or how to expand what you see as your most likely audience in, into other audiences because my audience has just been people who know me uh, as an artist or as a teacher, in, 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 as a teacher, to be blunt. So I, I teach different subjects. Someone takes a subject with me that they think that's me and they go watch that. But I'm like you actually, I wanna expand. I, I feel like I have something to teach that you guys are hearing a little bit about that I just don't have the opportunity to teach often enough, which is something that is not dominated by a particular uh, model, you know, a particular, um, something that painters can engage and musicians can engage and, and illustrators and cartoonists, I love cartoonists and animators and, uh, you know, you name it, photographers, maybe even performers. And, and it's basically about this. If I'm right, and even if I'm not, you know, I said that oddly spiritual thing before about me believing that this is one being, but if I'm right, I could plug into that, which is another one of the reasons why I don't get afraid anymore when I make art. I don't even take credit for it. I'm like this Ira guy is just another tool hanging from the tool belt. I'm right next to the hammer and the, and the screwdriver, there's Ira hanging there. And even my personality, which really kind of annoys me, he, the personality, it's got a purpose too. It's just like a purpose, you know, I'm another tool in, in the universal tool belt. And so I, I try to do my job and uh, let it all happen, you know? And literally, I, I don't mean that in a cavalier way, like don't learn systems, you know? Yeah, you should know the color wheel, everybody in here. You should know the color wheel, there's no doubt about it. And then you should ignore it. <laughs> you should learn it and ignore it. You know, that's how it works. And you know, you, you, uh, you digest, you know, because you're part of that massive ecosystem that includes everything artful. Hey, have any of you ever seen a bird of paradise on like YouTube or something? It's a bird. The bird, you got it. Listen, don't do it now, but you owe this to yourself. YouTube birds of paradise, there's many of them. These are artist birds if I've ever seen. For one, they could dance like you can't believe. Now, I don't know if the women dance because it's mostly the boy birds who dance uh, to try to get the attention of the girl birds and they're like funky as all. But the other thing is they make these little nests that are completely different from one another with color and shiny things. And they, they steal stuff as they try to find their materials. Yeah, I wonder if any of those birds of paradise get nervous when they're making the nest. Like, will the other birds respect this? You know, will I get my nest degree? You know, uh, how many credits will I get for this nest? But, um, you know, this part of nature out there making art. You know, there's a kind of um, gorilla that drums. I used to have recordings of it. Drums on trees, but you know, it's recognizable music. So like, you know, art is definitely a universal thing. I mean, why in the world would the universe produce a peacock? I mean, you know, if Darwin's gonna tell me that all those feathers are to get another peacock, but all the peacocks have the feathers. Like to them, it's like no big deal. They're probably looking at like, the bald cat and thinking it's the coolest looking thing they ever saw because they're like covered like that. But your universe did that. Universe did that. You know, on some level that's just, I saw a flock of peacocks by the way, in a tree. And I thought I was like imagining it and then they took off. I was just like, tell me art is just a human thing. There's just no way. It may be a wavelength, a channel, a radio station. You, know, you turn the knob and some days there's more static. It's like, <laughs> and other days you're like, whoa, I'm grooving. And you know, you don't even know what time it is. You know, and it's just coming out and criticism, who gives a damn criticism? You're like, you're just participating. You're the one who's stirring the soup. Soup's gonna get made with or without us. You might as well participate, you know? What was that question? <laughs> I just ran off with, where, 
Where are we? Well, I, I, to- I totally understood it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I do that. We, we, sp- we, sp- we speak another language. That's all. <laughs> you know, life's a tangent. So I'm on a tangent too. <laughs> it's a tributary. The river just broke over the dam and no one knows where the water's going. I, I joke because I-, I see my art, squirrel art, because one one page is one thing and it goes 180 degrees in the next <laughs> so I, I'm on instagram i'll definitely take a look anybody <laughs> else have a question for me hey iron i think yeah. i found that quote and it's a cart vonnegut quote oh really i think I so exactly um the arts are not a way to make a living they are a very human way of making life more bearable I think that's very related. It, it isn't the yeah. same quote, actually, but I like it. Yeah. I like it. You know, I'd well, like to add, ask, you know, bearable, but how about like profound? Bearable is a low bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Kurt's, Kurt's not around now to <laughs> rebuttal that. So you know, I can't believe it. I just, believe it alone. I just criticized Kurt Vonnegut. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I got nerve. But, um, yeah, no, I, I feel what he's saying. It's just that, you know, for me, I just have, I just am so devoted to this idea that, you know, Ramdas is a, a, some of you may have heard of this guy, Ramdas. Uh, R- Ramdas uh, was a professor, actually, an Ivy League professor who got involved in crazy times in the 60s, um, got thrown out of Harvard, <laughs> and uh, became um, a very well known spiritual leader, um, Ramdas. And, uh, oh gosh, where were we? Oh yes, he was saying once about sacralizing your life. He said, the mission is to sacralize your life. And you know, that's amazing. That means to make everything you do sacred. It sounds so corny. I hope you guys know that I mean what I'm saying. You know, it's like, how do you sacralize making the coffee? You know, I make the coffee with my family every morning. I have to get up before them. And I feel bad if I don't, but I feel so great knowing they're going to come down to, to coffee. It's, it's a sacred thing for me. It's like lighting a candle in church or, or you know, or um, praying, you know, and I, I just think like everything as much as possible will be that way. Even when my ass gets kicked, and by the way, my ass has been kicked. You know, I don't want you to think that this is a totally silver spoon life guy you're talking to. You know, I, I've, I've, been through more than my share by most counts and, and I would make your hair raise if I told you my stories but um all the same though I have to sacralize even that even that how is how bizarre is it that we're here how did this ever happen you know what kind of dance is this you know it's wonderful it's sad it's horrific it's challenging it's amazing you know it's 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 the full heart stunned with love and then it's the broken heart on the floor saying i can't bear it but then it does then it gets up and it links itself to everyone else who ever had a broken heart you know um it's a profound possibility that we have to talk to each other through our art through our words through our actions through our decisions through our willingness to make eye contact uh, those of you with your cameras off, you know, I'm not going to blame you, but, you know, it, I, and I assume it's your internet connection anyway, you know, that you can't zoom properly with your camera on, but, you know, eye contact is great, even through Zoom. <laughs> you know, soul contact in any way that you could make it, you know, you know, I know that we're all freaked because these last few years have been some weird science fiction movie. You know, I was in the pizza place and everyone's wearing a mask. I'm feeling lucky to be in the pizza place, but we're all wearing masks. And I thought five years ago, this would have been a story I would have made up in class to, to be a low budget idea for one of my film students. Just buy a bunch of surgical masks, make believe there's a pandemic, but it is a pandemic. And like, I barely leave the house and I don't know if the vaccine is blah, 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 blah. And anyway, there was a madman in the White House who spoke gibberish every day and people loved his gibberish. You know, and uh, you know, I, I really, I, you have nothing against clowns, but they should be in the circus. You know, I mean, really, uh, multimedia clowns, is that what happened? Is that how we got that president? He was a multimedia clown. 
And if that was a performance piece, it was a little too scary for me. But, you know, between pandemics, crazy presidents, you know, on and on and on, uh, police that you don't know when you can trust and when you can't, you know, people who want to know, or do you fall into a slot? Are you a boy or a girl? Are you sure? You know, the rest of it, it's just like, my God, help me. Uh. But, you know, when you reach your heart out, it changes everything, you know? Like suddenly someone falls down, you're walking down the street, someone falls down and you pick them up. You go over there, you actually grab the stranger by the hand, you pick them up. How could that not be profound? And tell me that it's not. You know that it is. You know that it is and you feel different when you walk away, you know? So anyway, back to art. Can I show you some more art? Yeah, we'd love to see it. Okay, I want to... Uh, I have a question. Oh yeah, please, Jeanette. Um, so I feel like we got like the light version of like your professional background. Mm -hmm. I just was wondering if you could go more in depth as to like what you do professionally. I'm not sure if you're like a teacher primarily or if you're a designer primarily. Um, and question. maybe like, what is your like educational background? Sure. Um, uh, I went to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Um, I became an artist at a very early age and started reading books and writing letters to artists and bullying my way into clubs. The Cartoonist Society, by the way, I'm mentioning for Salvador since he, he's affectionate for that. I was 11, 12 years old. I, I, I forced my way in the door. They treated me very nicely. But um, there was a shooting at my high school and the newspaper showed up and uh, first week of high school. And I went over to the newspaper people and said, I'm an artist, I wanna draw for you. And they said, you could do it if you do a drawing about the shooting. And I, so I published at that point in, in the local newspaper, I got a taste for it. Then I went to the School of Visual Arts and I wanted to be a cartoonist. I loved cartooning, I was a young man and been studying it for years, got a taste of publishing. And I was lucky to study with um, truly amazing world famous cartoonists. And, uh, who really changed the map of my life, even when I left cartooning. Um, uh, Art Spiegelman, who drew Mouse, M-A-U-S, won the Pulitzer Prize, was a teacher of mine. Kicked my ass, I don't mind saying, but I needed it kicked. Um, he just, he, he kicked it well in a way that propelled me in the right direction. Um, and many other influences. Amy Taubin, the film critic, uh, who I also was a terrible student with because uh, she taught experimental film who knew I was gonna teach it years later. But about what I do, oh yes. Yeah, so then I went on for a master's cause I realized I liked teaching. I liked my tribe and I like sharing with creatives cause we give the world a lot that matters. So I feel like if I could help a lot of people be creative while being creative, I could help hundreds if not thousands of people make art. That's great for the world. So it's like a real ecological thing. Uh, you know, that I'm having, hopefully having this effect, you know, and they go out, some of them teach, but they all do what they do with their work and it expands. So I realized a master's degree was going to help me get more teaching work. And I went to Boston University, uh, partially because they paid for half the degree if, if I was a teacher's assistant there. So I got more experience there, met some more people, came back and opened a small art school with a guy named Derek Flood, talented artist who lives in China now and uh, uh, called Tribeca Arts. And a lot of people still remember that. It was a tiny school, but um, it was fun. Um, so, uh, you know, it, and then at some point computers came out and uh, I was busy jamming on, uh, with a lot of electronic instruments as a musician and realized I liked buttons and dials too, as well as splashing paint and drawing. So um, I learned, started to learn graphics. You know, at the dawn of all this stuff, Photoshop, Illustrator, other stuff like that, and I realized that was fun also. And there was so much work teaching it, if you could really honestly help people get the hang of these things. And so I uh, dove in, you know, so I would do a few projects professionally. Uh, sometimes some would take a really long time, two years even. So I might uh, drop whole art forms for a couple of years while one dominates for a really big movie or a book or a record or something else. Um, and if, it, if it's about money, 
you know, a lot of it's been early, there was illustrations, and then it was mostly websites, um, video, a lot of websites with motion and, and film integrated, you know, like commercial in the website or the lobby type thing I'd showed you earlier, the animation, that kind of thing. Uh, that paid well, and it helped me expand my skill set. At a given point, I realized I liked my skill set expanded. Look, Jeanette, I want to be honest. After my cartooning years, I fell so hard for painting. I saw myself as some kind of monk and I was getting very weird because I was painting incredible hours with others who just did that. We lived in this weird little bubble. Uh, it's where I met Perry, by the way, Kathleen, and um, at the studio building in Manhattan. And uh, it was weird how graphic design in web design and multimedia design drew me out of a cave I might have never left. You know, even my own friends were saying, you're getting weirder by the day, you're speaking in a strange shorthand. But now talking so often and really loving the next generation, I, I really gotta be honest. I can't believe I'm the old guy now, but I'm just loving it. You know, wearing the old guy suit is just a hell of a lot of fun. You know, because now it's like, I know what's going to happen to a lot of you guys. I could see it. You're going to make stuff and you're going to move people and you're going to make them laugh and cry and think and change their mind and change it again and love you for it. And how great is that? And I get to help people do that. So, yeah, I moved more into teaching. You know, and, and often the schools I work at hire me for stuff. They need a movie or they need a website or they need posters. There are a lot of schools, actually, I've done that kind of stuff for. Lately, I've kind of closed the door. I, I, I don't really want any more commercial work, to be honest. I have too many projects of my own. I got all these new skills to play with. I've gone animation crazy lately. Crazy. Now I'm dying to tell a story. Um, so which means I'll have to write a script. And I don't know if that answered at all. But you know, I want to say to Jeanette and everybody else, you'll find ways to float the boat. Some of you want it to only be one thing. I'm a graphic designer and I'm going to work at a magazine for God's sakes. And maybe you will. But in the meantime, cast a wider net around that first choice because everything near it is damn cool. <laughs> and those people are going to like you and like what you do. And it's going to channel you to magic places. Maybe that first choice, maybe a better choice behind it. So you keep that in the middle, but you cast a wide net. You know, I think if I'd had my way, by the time I got involved with painting, I would have been selling them for a bundle and um, just never leaving the studio. Or maybe I just believe that. I actually don't like selling my work, to be honest. I'm a bad influence, so I, I, I should probably go now. <laughs> I, I sell work when someone hired me to make it, but the work I make for myself, I'm, I'm terribly greedy. You know, if people want to buy work at the show up there, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm hoping to, to start a print. How do you say this word? Is it glyce or glyce or G L I C E E? Glyce. Glyce, is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people I know are starting to do that. I have a printer suitable for it. I did some tests. The work is often on, 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 on same papers that I'm using. My work is so confusing, whether they're prints or, or handmade or what they are anyway. No one even knows if I'm coming or going anymore, including me. So I think prints will be uh, another form of reality rather than copies. So I think in my hands, it's gonna be a whole other thing. So that may be a business, another business. People have been asking and I'm just sort of like slow about answering them till they go away. <laughs> Interior designer wanted the work and it's like, do I see myself in a hotel? And you know, why shouldn't people in hotels have some soul food on the wall, you know, to stir them at the hotel? Yeah, I don't know. I think I should show it in that hotel. Get that buyer to buy my glycies. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that's not too disappointing. You know, I want to tell you, I'm not famous. I guess maybe in a way, if you collected everybody who knows me together, I'm a little famous. You know, the people who think I do this and the others who do that, and we've got them all together and in a small pond big fish. But, uh, you know, I have to do say, though, it's really like that rock in the pebble, you know, uh, sorry, the uh, rock in the lake, I meant to say, 
you know, I love those rings that they're emanating. You know, so this piece of artwork, uh, I'm a little mad at Instagram, I gotta say, because they were loving me. I was just like getting followers every day, every five minutes and hundreds of likes. And then Instagram turned its back on me. I gotta figure out why they're mad. They're not showing my work to anyone who doesn't find me on their own. I, the hashtags have boycott me. <laughs> Any other questions for me? I, 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 you know, Kathleen, I'm not in a hurry, but I know my time is coming up. Yeah, um, maybe if you showed a few more things, then, you know, people might have a few more questions or something. Um, right. Usually, you know, people do have questions, so maybe they just, uh, if they see something, they might, it might. You talk, yeah, people could ask all, all works up there. Yeah. Um, I want to show work um, because, you know, as much as I love all these different art forms I've been talking about, this series that I gave you a couple peeks at is what I go to whenever uh, it's, uh, it's the deepest investigation and possibly of my life at this point. Let me just move things around, give me a second. Um, I'm gonna zip through these a little bit. And if anybody wants me to stop, I can. I'll just make, you know, small comments. Um, Kathy, feel free to jump in if you have questions, or you wanna encourage questions. Lately, this astronaut guy has emerged from my subconscious with a tremendous persistence. I don't know if you could make him out. He's, he's dissolving. Um, and you know, a lot of it's about COVID, I think, you know, really. But in a weird way, I feel like we so often feel like this fellow, you know, like we're wearing some kind of like suit that we walk through the world in and you kind of wonder if anyone sees who you are inside or not. Is that um, watercolor? This is ink and uh, mostly uh, acrylic ink, which acts a lot like traditional India ink. Uh, but I use it because I do sometimes use acrylic paint and I'm very fond of fluid acrylic paint and even mixed with water, you could buy fluid. So it's so fluid between the acrylic ink and the acrylic fluid paint. Also, there's a lot of printer ink, strangely involved. Uh, some of this is drawing, some of it is printing. Uh, it reaches a stage where I don't really know uh, which I drew and which I didn't. Here's a close up. Also, yeah. I, tear, I tear stuff too. Do you have like a whole bunch of little astronaut stencils that you made like of different sizes? No, actually that astronaut was made in Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, this paper is printer friendly, um, Strathmore, good Strathmore paper. Uh, and it's actually printed in, um, often I just ask for trouble in the printer. I love when my printer is not quite working or it's half out of ink, stuff like that. I'll do everything you're not supposed to do to it. Uh, which I also do in movies and music. I'm a very noisy musician, play static and things. You know, there's also a lot of writing as you can see, and I am actually saying stuff. Um, I, you know, you all know the zone. So when I get in the zone, especially with this series, I'm pretty out there and I, 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 I write often uh, weird kind of prayers or hopes or fears. Uh, that's real tape. <laughs> I like using tape. Here's another close up so you could see some of the writing. Over here it says simple stuff, open here. Thanks. I don't even want to go into what, what that's all about. So, you know, the astronaut was preceded by this guy. Uh, you know, those divers from like the distant past, they actually lowered you down. If the tube broke, you know, that was it for you, right? That really kind of meant a lot to me, that whole image of um, passing through the different worlds. Uh, which I'm a great believer in, <laughs> the freedom. Who's that face? I wish I knew. <laughs> you know, and, and I think I'm gonna make him into a woman. You know, for a while, I was wondering, is, is this his suit? You know, and I'm thinking maybe he gets in the suit and nobody's in there, or uh, the woman's already in the suit. Uh, maybe he's the technician. Depending on my mood, <laughs> there'll be months where he takes a role or another. I, I uh, yeah, we'll see if he comes back. He's one of the only people that got a face. I have a monk 
I'm very uh, motivated by um, meditation, which uh, hasn't come up today. I, I meditate every day for many, many years, um, 14 years or something. And I've been studying um, religions from around the world, but mostly Asia for um, almost 40 years. So um, I'm, I'm very influenced by the world's religions, but I'll confess uh, Buddhism most. This is a recent favorite of mine. So the, the, the wrinkles, they're, they're crushed, they're folded, <laughs> they're drawn on, they're torn, they're taped back together, they're glued back together. They're put back in the printer if, if they were printed at all sometimes, second time. They're just, you know, all over the place. Anybody else have a question? I'm, I'm gonna scoot through these because there's a lot of close-ups. Um, oh, yes. Sorry, I did have one more question. You had mentioned um, you did cartoons for a time. I'm an aspiring comic artist who's eventually st actually starting to get the courage to start posting her work online, yeah. uh -huh. starting with this project I'm finishing. But I'm curious if you could speak to your time um, working in cartoons and comics, sort of what was that like? Um, did Does anything, any events, whatever? It was so uh, formative for me. Out? You know, so formative, you know, as, as a lot of artists, as a young, shy guy, I would leave my cartoons out on the table, hoping someone would say, oh, those are good. <laughs> as a way to like meet people when I was young. And then to, to actually get published and realize that there's a communication form that's popular. Like you gotta be, you know, we, we, we have to face like, what does the average person think of painting? You know, and how often do they look? Uh, how many more people look at other art forms before they look at painting? You know, people look with painting, a lot of people with great passion, but even more people are looking at cartooning and illustration. But for me, it was the idea of sequence and symbolism that really affected me for my years in cartooning. Because cartoons really, in a way, are always symbols. They're always an extreme shorthand. They're a shorthand for time. They're a shorthand for who's there and the props and what things mean and how they resonate with a simple symbol, but also just time. The way we talk about time, I still think there's time all over my work, um, even if um, even if it's single page. I'm not talking about the movies or the music or the writing, or even the websites, even these. So, um, you know, you know, cartooning sometimes sounds to people like humor, and I, I'm a great believer in humor, but it's also all these other things, you know. Um, Again, just that outreach, that message in a bottle, but it's not one bottle, it's a big broadcast uh, for the world. So, you know, one could argue that all the boxes that show up in these works has something to do with my time doing comic strips <laughs> and comic pages where there were dividers already, you know, and things sometimes cross a divide on a good graphic novel, for example. So yeah, I do feel like cartooning is, remains influential. Also, I've been animating a lot lately and I like the simplicity of the cartoon form. So my animations are vector, clean. Those of you who use Adobe Illustrator, kind of the opposite of what you're seeing <laughs> right here. They're um, animation friendly. So this is very recent, actually. This is like this week. So this could look like anything by tomorrow, for that matter. I'm going to torture you for one minute with something. Let me see if this is even possible. Can you hear that? No? It's I'm very stop. it's very faint. Really? I heard it. Tell that story. Oh. I really don't know how I feel about it. Actually, I meant to play you this song that was about one of my drawing teachers, but I, I, I think I better not uh, just now. You know, I just want to give you a taste of it. I'm just trying to encourage people just to say, like, I, 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 I mean what I say. I, uh, you play your music. Some people like it. Some people hate it. So what choice do you have? Not play it 
or play it. You know? So we're going to say, um, Cameron, especially you, who you're, you said you're about to get brave and start posting on Instagram, do it. Do it. You have an audience. You don't even know you have an audience. Don't deprive them. Don't be greedy and keep it to yourself. I mean, I'm glad that you have it for yourself, really, I am, but I'd rather you share it. It's a big world out there. People will start finding you. Use some hashtags. Hashtags are for strangers. <laughs> you know, they help find you. And it'll, it'll build up your courage. You know, by the way, you all know who Charles Schultz is? Yes. Right? Charlie Brown, the artist who makes Charlie Brown. I met the woman who turned Charles Schultz down. I met the woman who rejected Charlie Brown. We're talking like billions of dollars of revenue, thousands of smiling people. We wouldn't have had Snoopy. And what happened was the young Charles Schultz took the early Charlie Brown to one of the two syndicates in New York City, either King Features Syndicate, Syndicate or United Features Syndicate. I forget which. And, and yeah, they were bad. They weren't good yet. They weren't bad. They weren't good yet. They were undercooked. You know, they were potential. And she didn't see the potential at that point and told him to go home. He went to the next syndicate and they saw it, right? So it's like, you know, the fear of failure, what is that? It's really the fear of somebody else's judgment. And at what point do you win? If there's 10 people, do you win when six like your work? Do you win if it's all 10? Do you win if it's one of them? Do you win if none of them like it because you're too good for them? At my graduation from the School of Visual Arts, John Kennedy said, just because Van Gogh sold one painting, don't think you're better if you sell none. <laughs> so <laughs> you let it out. I'm not sure I'm the best filmmaker or the best musician out there, you know, but I have a soul and some people that's enough. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. Does anybody have any questions for Ira and I? You've seen some of the things he's working on currently. Technique or... Yeah, anything you want to know. Technical stuff, digital, physical. Uh, survival, sanity, joy, grief. Kathy, am I keeping your students after class? Is that what I'm doing? No, I think they're- I have a comment. Trying to uh, formalize. Okay. I, I, I have a comment. Yeah, John. Go ahead, John. You usually do. Um, uh, you said something earlier about um, when you're creating something, sometimes you might make a mistake and you turn that mistake into something else. Um, I, I normally do that when I'm when I'm drawing something because um, mostly it's I just draw from thought. I don't know. Sometimes I'll draw. I don't know what it's going to be. I'll just turn it into something. But um, a lot of times, um, a line that I thought I was going to make. And, and I might have messed up on it, I will alter it and change into something else. And I, I you know, I was always wondering if that was, you know, kind of like a bad practice or if it was, you know, something that will actually help you to like, just push on. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because it, it lets me know that it's okay to alter things that you, you know, previously thought might be messed up, so. You know, John, I, I, I really hear that question and, and I'm pleased to address it. You know, I, I, you know, one thing I have to throw in, a director I know, a guy named John Moore uh, said to me, you know, there's two movies, uh, you know, he's a filmmaker exclusively. So he put it in his language. There's two movies. He goes, the movie you thought you were gonna make and the movie you made. <laughs> and uh, I really, I love that. And if one knows that's gonna be the truth then you get to skip to the end of the line there, you kind of know. Um, it's going to be its own movie, that illustration, that painting, that graphic design uh, in the end. That's not to say that your willpower has nothing to do with it. Of course it does. Every time you're like, this color is not right, and you reach for a color you can't explain and put it there, right? You're, you're, honing, you're, you're loaning your intuition to fate. You're loaning your intuition to fate. So you're scratching that itch. And the older you get, by the way, you'll scratch those itches even faster or sometimes just let it be deeper. So I'm not really saying that correction is wrong, that correction is incorrect. 
I'm not really precisely saying that. You have to notice a lot of my work that I showed you today is very loose. Uh, it it uh, almost, you know, you, sometimes you don't know whether I'm controlling it or it's controlling me. Um, all the wet and watery stuff, for example. But the, you know, the rhinoceros stuff I was showing you in the giraffes, that stuff was very neat, it's very neat. But I didn't know what they were gonna look like. I had hunches. And I think this is part of the path. Trust your hunches like you trust fuel. The fuel doesn't take you where you're gonna go. You just put gas in the car, but you trust the fuel. So your hunches are the fuel. You, you really can't know where you're gonna go but you have to trust in the fuel because your magic has to do with your relationship with your intuition, your inside, your fuel, your, your itches that need to be scratched, your hunches, the stuff you just can't bear. No, no, no. And maybe that's a revision I can handle. No, 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 that's gotta go. Maybe you've done that too much. Maybe it's a routine. You know, I'm afraid of routines. That I am. You know, like I'm not really interested in anybody who's figured out a recipe. You know, it's why I don't listen to most pop music uh, by the musicians who repeat themselves. You know, it's like, oh, I, you know, if you could be fresh in each song and it's pop, I love pop. But if you're like, oh, everybody likes this, so I'm going to keep doing it. So we want to avoid that. So I would say this, the line goes down and there's sometimes when the line's going down and uh, the appearance of the line and, and your pencil on the paper are indivisible. You know, it, you just, you're drawing, the lines emerging, your hands moving, the lines emerging. And if you're quiet, if, if we could shut up, you could let that line draw itself to some degree. But then you get involved. Bad line, no, no, no. Or you start drawing like this, this type of drawing, the zero commitment style. You know, there's a time you just gotta go like, okay, maybe you don't go whoosh like Picasso. Maybe you go real slowly, but it's still commitment. And then erasing could be commitment too. It can be. I don't know if I made it worse, John. <laughs> if I was more helpful there. But you know, it's like no, you, it, it, it's definitely uh, what you said was good. You know, given to the fact that momentum exists, let yourself be that rock rolling downhill. Don't feel like you have to be the one at the rudder and the steering wheel, because fate's going to take care of it. You know, fate conjured up a strange combination of historic essences, and that is you. Genetic heritage, local heritage, whatever you learned from good things and bad, and conjured this unique self. And if you just could scratch those itches enough, don't try to be anybody else. Look, and even if, you know, Art Spiegelman, an influential cartoonist that I mentioned earlier, kicked my ass because at a young age, I was a good mimic, had a gift for technique. So he was like, oh, you're borrowing a nose from this cartoonist and eyes from that cartoonist and you're calling it your style, but you have nothing to say. I was offended, really offended. I even left school, got weird jobs hitchhiking around the planet. Um, but then I realized he was right, that I was glad to have technique, but how was I gonna liberate my technique? I had to find myself. So sometimes you stare at art and you love it and you, you wish you were this artist maybe and, or 10 artists and then you forget them. And you take out some paper and some color and you make a mess or you have a mission. You know, I wanna draw someone having a cup of coffee, sitting on the steps of a house, a simple mission. What's gonna happen by the time you get through that? You know, by the time you get through it, you can't help yourself. What house? How's he sitting? How's she sitting? You know, uh, what's implied by that person just sitting there? You know, so there's so much to be said for letting loose. So set targets by all means, because they get you all going, they get you moving. Set targets. Uh, just know it's a moving target and be willing to move with it. Um, I had a target. question. Yes. So I love how optimistic you are about, you know, whatever may happen, whatever stress comes your way, take it for what it is and actually use it mm -hmm. to inspire you. Mm -hmm. um, but my question is with me, 
um, what do you do? What are some suggestions when you just lost your creative spark um, just because of life and like school or what, because you're, you have a whole family and you teach. Yeah. So I just want to see like, what do you do to kind of gain, regain that back when you have to wear like 10 or 15 hats at one time? Oh gosh, is that a good question? You know, I'm, I'm currently teaching five classes a week. I have 125 students. Um, I, I have a small family that I adore and I spend time with my wife and daughter every day. Uh, and I feel really lucky to do that. Um, and I have it in the house studio, which is kind of helpful. Um, and really, that's about all I could swing. Um, I did mention I have a meditation practice, which is part of my answer to you. There has to be a way to go into neutral. There's so much power in neutral. If you're always in first gear, second gear, third gear, or reverse, back and forth, you, whichever direction you choose, you got to go into neutral sometimes. Um, and I, I want to share an image with you for a minute. You know, a bowl isn't very big. And if you put a lid on it, it's quite a bit smaller. Now, this is a person who never goes into neutral. They got a lid on their bowl. But as soon as you open it, that's the whole universe right there. <laughs> it's, that's it. You know, there's got to be a way to open it. And, and so a, some way of getting really quiet where you're not trying to produce. This is a surprising thing for me to say. Knowing how to truly not produce. I'm not sure TV works for that. Right, because you're actually, you know, echoing, you know, neural mirror mirroring what's going on on the TV. Uh, but it, some silent practice of some sort, so you can go into neutral and let the universe just be. So you get a chance to participate. Don't be so busy being ourselves. It's so tiring trying to be ourselves all the time. It's a hard act to, to keep up. But look, do I get down? I want to just be fair. I've suffered some tragedies, and everyone has. So I'm not going to make my life melodramatic, but I've suffered my share of tragedies. And I'm not sitting there crying, thinking, thank God for this tragedy. I'm going to make an offering of this tragedy. But inside, on some level, I know I am. On some level, in the middle of all the pain, I know on some level I'm going to channel that tragedy because that's what people do. <laughs> that's what we always do. You could hardly help it but it helps to know that you're gonna do it. So that helps move me forward. But about that spark and what to do about that spark. You know, for one, there has to be room made for the spark to exist. And that's hard because you may be working full time, you may be taking full credits, you may have gazillion hours of homework. You, you, some of you may even have kids, you know, or other responsibilities. Um, so I know that that's hard, and even if it's small, you know, I want to mention this to you. I'd made a career shift at some point and started doing a lot more uh, commercial art. I, I took a bunch of years out of my own projects and only did work for hire for a bunch of years. It, it, you know, and it was tough to do, but um, I had to do it for a number of reasons. Did I get down at that time? Did I get tired? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. But I knew I had to figure out how to wedge in a schedule. This is not so mystical, guys. This is something like straight up, I'm saying. Strategic. You know, one has to rearrange one's life to be an artist. You just do. I'm not saying you can't fall in love. I did. I've been married 25 years. This year. <laughs> um, you know, you could do it. Uh, you can have kids even. But, you know, you, you want to figure out how you can do it if you're going to do it. You know, uh, you know, what kind of relationships, what kind of jobs? And when you toughen it, you know, you got to work at Burger King for a while. They need you to do overtime. Yeah, that's going to suck. But at least do research while you're there and plan how to get a wedge in. How much do you need? I'm talking, man, if you only had five hours a week, but you got serious during that five hours, spark or not, spark or not, you sat down and you have a rough idea what your mission is at a given time, right? You know, let's, you know, say you are a design major. Let's say you're an illustration major. You have to choose something then and there. And don't question how good it is. Person coffee on the stoop. Person sitting on the roof. Two people on a roller coaster. Someone meeting someone while walking a dog. You could go, I could just keep on spitting these out all day. But it's about having the commitment. You throw a dart at an idea. Psh, oh, it landed on that idea. And you start to draw. 
you know, and like I was saying to, to somebody else, allow it to flow. At first, you do have to initiate. That's true. If that spark leaves you for a day, maybe it's time to rest. Maybe it is time to just rest two days, get some sleep. But by the third day, you're like, no, no, it's time for me now. This is where my will is one of the tools in the tool belt, my willpower. I, I, I initiate, make any choice and see what happens. You know, that's my formula. I initiate. I'll start so many things at once. I have no idea what's trash and what isn't trash. And frankly, there's no more trash because in the end, I'll cut it up and it'll become a great part for something else. But we all have different ways to do it. You know, one person I, I jam and one person said, Ira, how come you don't make a mistake? And I said, I don't make a mistake because I don't know what I'm doing. And there's nothing I could break. I, I'm not playing a song. What can I break? I don't know if that helps at all. No, it does. I, I definitely um, took everything you just said. Um, and I and I do hear you meditating and just staying still for a while, like you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Indispensable. The world is so fast and you get caught up in so much. You think you have all this time and you kind of kind of waste time on doing things that you know you shouldn't. <laughs> so I understand. Take initiative and Sometimes it's just getting to work, just do it. I get it. Yeah, and especially when you're in school, sometimes some simple rules have to be set. You know, I gave up TV for about 20 years and mm -hmm. because it's the biggest time devourer. And then I graduated to allowing myself to watch one night a week. And I had to pick really careful because I only got one night a week. So I didn't waste any time on a show with a laugh track. It told me when to laugh. I mean, if there were violins telling me when to cry, I was out. Don't, don't spoon feed me, you know, but I, I had to eliminate that. Like if you kill zombies a lot, you don't know how many hours you've been killing zombies. They're dead. They're already dead. They're zombies. You're not. That means you got to kick in that thing. You got to kick in that device. It, it's time you don't have, unless you do have it, but most of us don't. So you got to figure out if there is a time waster, what is it? Have you been in a bad relationship for a gazillion years? We know what has to happen. Are you, are you addicted to something, you know, that's like ruining everything? You gotta take some kind of action, you know, but mostly it's the small addictions. TV is the worst. Not that I don't watch it by the way, you know, because now I, I have my groove going. But when I was younger, I didn't yet. And I had to protect my groove. And I, I had to get things that interfered out of the way. I had to leave a neighborhood. You know, I, I told you my life wasn't always a uh, silver spoon. I had to leave where I came from. You know, we really, we were in trouble all the time. I had to get out of the climate where everyone was in trouble all the time. No mention mental health, right? I know some of you are dealing with mental health issues. I know it off the bat. How do I know that? Hmm. You know it. You know, and, and it's one of the reasons why some people make art to help with that. That's, uh, I think I may be one, maybe one, meditation love, learning how to love, patience, learn how to get up when you fall down. These are all strengthening things that make an artist better and a human better. What a great deal we have, right? That we can use our art to be better as people and we could use our lives as people to be better as artists. It's the best deal I ever heard. There's no better life, none that I know of. I gotta <coughs> warn you all, I don't stop when people ask questions and talk. I go on forever. <laughs> Ira, thank you so much. You've been so kind with your time. You realize you've been teaching all morning and you probably want to get with your family. Well, you know, they were excited for me. They actually wanted to come. My wife wanted to come. Well, never so, come. She can come. I know, you know Maricel. So I, I thought, sure do. Oh, you could have just shown up, but we didn't think of it in advance. Okay. She's been eavesdropping over there. <laughs> so guys, listen, I want to thank you all. You know, those of you who ask questions, thank you so much for asking your questions. I, I, from my heart, it's the soul connection that makes it all worth it. it, it and then, you know, I've been accused of being an optimist before. You know, <laughs> I, think, I don't know that I'm really an optimist. I, I see myself as a pragmatist, you know, as a very practical man. And, uh, and my practical way of seeing things is convert <coughs> always you know solar power is great 
You know, so like what other oh, energy sources are there? You know, um, anger, love, joy, grief, optimism, pessimism. Well, maybe not pessimism, but sadness is all right sometimes. You know, it's, it's all an energy source. So I would just want to say, though, for me, knowing I'm not alone is the best thing about Instagram, by the way, to let strangers share with you. You know, it's like, really, I'm like, I, I have a, like 1,700 followers at the moment. I'm just like amazed. Who are these people? These people actually get my wavelength. I bet you I get theirs. And some of them I got to share with their, their work. Um, so thank you for making this connection. Your questions have all been meaningful, really thoughtful. You know, I could tell each person really meant it. I'm a total stranger and you kind of like welcomed me into your universe for a very short amount of time. And uh, that's just very, very special to me. I was really looking forward to it. You know, Kathleen, you know, I wanted to say that, you know, uh, I was excited about everything we've discussed really, but I got totally fired up when I realized this was not one major. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, destiny knocks. That's one of my favorite classes to teach because I get to see what they've done in all their classes too, because it's a, it's a portfolio building class as well. So they're looking at careers and then they're looking to build a portfolio and resume and get out the door to. And you know, that's wonderful. It's jobs and, such. and practical. Yeah. But I want the musicians in here and the dancers and the actors and, and who do else do we leave out? Some sculptors, I think we need sculptors. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just, you know, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it be? You, Kathleen, you've been great. And, and everybody here, and those of you who didn't say a word, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you walked away. Unless you're killing zombies while I was talking. No, they're, 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 a lot of them are working off their phones, so they're... I know. I'm, I'm just horsing around. People wouldn't be <coughs> they want you to be. Or they're doing, or they're doing their laundry. I'm not sure why. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks again. Show of hands, everybody. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yes. Oh, thank, thank you, Ira. It, it was really, really great. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much. Now, Ira's going to have a show. Ira's going to have a show in the future at the Mercer Gallery. So stay in touch with that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. I hope to meet some of you again, guys. Listen, I, I have no face recognition. It's a weird thing for an artist. If I don't draw, you, <laughs> I, I can't recognize you. It's pretty weird. But if we meet again, please. Remind me where we met, and I'll remember the conversation for sure. And the the soul. <laughs> I mean it. Listen, Alrighty, I better go because Alrighty. I I I have a hard time partying, so I, I better go first. <laughs> All right. Thanks, <laughs> nice Ira. We'll talk you, soon. Bye, guys. Okay. Hi to the family.